This is my camera, the Panasonic GH4, worth about $300 in 2023. And this is the IMAX camera that Christopher Nolan used to shoot his latest film. If I was using 70mm IMAX film for this video, I would have used up my $300 right about now, around the 27 second mark. But I think I'll work with what I have. Hello everyone, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Michael DeFranco, and this is how I recreated a single frame of Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer here in my basement. The first step in this journey was determining my lensing and lighting for this shot. I knew it would be impossible to recreate the large format, shallow depth of field look that 70mm provides, so I did the next best thing and used my fastest lens, which was the Panasonic 25mm f1.7. Looking at the highlights on Cillian Murphy's face, I was able to determine there were two lights used in this scene. The first, the key light, is coming from the right hand of frame. You can even see this light in Cillian Murphy's eyes. This light is fairly specular, so I can tell it's coming from just outside of frame. Then there's this super specular light that's coming from just behind the actor and hitting this one specific spot just above his ear, but more on that later. With this understanding, I set up in my basement, hanging up a bed sheet to act as the backdrop, and estimating the distance between the camera and the chair I would be sitting in. I then staged it a light, and it took a couple of tries and some finagling, but I was eventually able to get the positioning and direction of the light about right. I then tried to tackle the backlight, first by clamping a desk lamp just outside of the frame, but this light was far too diffuse and ended up spilling onto the side of my face, so I knew this wasn't going to work. I then tried using a flashlight, which actually got pretty close to the specular highlight I was going for, but I knew it was going to be tricky because I didn't have any way to clamp the light to hold it in place. So my best bet was going to be trying to bend my arm backwards and hold it in the right spot during the shot. So feeling pretty confident, I got changed, rolled up a fake cigarette, and recorded myself a few different times in different positions. Opening the files in Premiere, I combed through all the takes until I found a frame that best matched my reference image. Once I had this determined, I opened the clip in DaVinci Resolve and began my color journey. I was pretty accurate with my skin tone exposure, so primary corrections were very minimal and mainly just consisted of transferring everything to black and white. I started my secondary corrections by fixing the background exposure using a mask and HSL selector, and I also used this tool to darken my right shoulder to make my suit appear more black as opposed to the light gray that it actually was. Next, I replicated that 70mm look by blurring the background and the edges of my face to replicate shallower depth of field. Then looking at the image, I noticed that the highlight under my eye wasn't coming across quite as I wanted it to, so I also brightened this up a bit. The last of my secondary corrections was a subtle fade to the edge of the backdrop. My final two touches were a hint of film grain, and because the flashlight ended up not working out in the end, I did have to composite the specular highlight onto my face. This is something that definitely was a disappointment for me and I was trying my best to avoid, but in the end I'm pretty happy with how the final result turned out. It really goes to show you how, with minimal equipment, locations, and resources, if you're able to problem solve and use the resources you do have to your advantage, you can do a lot more than you think. Well, that's about it from me. I hope you enjoyed this little shot recreation and explanation. If you are curious to see more of my shot recreations, definitely go check out my Instagram, which is linked below. And other than that, I hope you have a great day and thanks for stopping by.